I'm back for the Octoprint install part two. So we installed our 0.17 Octopi image on a Raspberry Pi and everything worked out just fine. But now we want to get into the multi install with 0.17 and see if anything has changed from the previous tutorial I did on that. So in this one, we're going to work through a script to install multiple instances of Octoprint, four in this case, and get them all set up and working so you can access multiple printers on the same Raspberry Pi. Again, we'll take a look at the Pi 3 and the Pi 4 to see if there's any difference. So let's go ahead and get into it. Back to the Octoprint web interface. Now most of this stuff is going to be done through command line through the PuTTY tool, but there is one thing that I suggest you do before you get started with this process and that is upgrade to the newest version of Octoprint. Octopi 0.17 is on the most current release, that's 1.3.12, but there is a new version out there for release candidate, 1.4. So depending on when you're doing this process, you might want to go ahead and update Octoprint. Just for a note, 1.4 will support the newer versions of Python, since the 2. Dot versions are going out of support. So to check that, just go up here to settings, go to software update, and if there's an update available, it'll have it listed here, and you can just hit update all. Since we're already at 1.3.12, we can go ahead and start. You want to make sure these are updated so that all of the instances that you're going to make are going to be on the same version. You don't have to update them separately that way. So now we need to log in SSH, go to command line for our Raspberry Pi, and run a bunch of commands. So let's open up the PuTTY tool, and we'll get into it. Here's PuTTY. You can use octopi.local here, or the IP. And let's go ahead and make that a save session because we're going to be coming back to it a few times. We do have to reboot during this process, so we'll just save. And I want to update a few settings on it just to make it a little easier to read. We'll go to a window, appearance. I'm going to change the font. I'm going to use bold, and I'm going to up it to 14. That really does seem to help a lot when you're working in PuTTY. So we can go back to session, go down here and hit save just to make sure that setting's been saved. Let's go ahead and open up. We can accept the host key. And the default login is pi, password, raspberry. You can see we're on 1.3.12 of Octoprint and Octopi 0.17.0. Now I do have a document out here that I use for the first rendition of this multi-instance install video. This video is going to be kind of a refresher. I am going to be using a lot of these commands from this document, but hopefully I'll also be able to make it a little bit easier with a few added things. Since we're going to need higher permissions or the root account to run a lot of these commands, let's just go ahead and log in as root. So we'll do sudo su, and you're going to need your root password, which is also raspberry. So for the manual commands, I'm just going to show you how to make one additional instance of Octoprint. And to create the other ones, I'll show you a different way. So we currently have one instance of Octoprint running, the main one that we installed during the Octoprint install. And if you list etc, slash init.d, you can see where that instance lives right here. By copying these and just updating the number of Octoprint to the one that we'd like to create, we can create multiples. So let's change directory cd into that etc slash init.d directory. Again, there's our Octoprint. And basically all we're going to do is make a copy of this file, but we're going to change everywhere that it says Octoprint to the new name of our new instance. Octoprint 2. And to make that much easier, I'm going to use the sed command. Here's the command we're going to use. Basically, that's all it's going to do. We're going to create a new file called Octoprint 2, and anywhere it says Octoprint, we're going to change it to Octoprint 2. Let's run this command, and I'll show you a little bit more about what it does. If we do another ls to list, we now have Octoprint and Octoprint 2. And if we do a cat command to look at Octoprint 2, it's just a pretty simple script that sets a lot of the configuration variables for running Octoprint, and you can see where we changed everywhere from Octoprint to Octoprint 2. So in a nutshell, that's what creates the second instance. You need to make that new instance file, this script file, executable. So we'll chmod 755 Octoprint 2. Now we need to do the same kind of thing in our etc default file. So let's change directory into etc slash default. And we'll do another list, ls, and you can see Octoprint right here. Same kind of deal. Everything that we need to change to create our Octoprint 2 instance, we're going to change with a sed command. Now this one's just a bit different because we have to change some of the port values. So by default, Octoprint uses 5000. For our new instance, we're going to use 5001. 
We'll change the host from 127 0.0.1, that's localhost, to 0.0.0.0 because you can't have two. And we'll change the base directory to .octoprint.2 from the home pi directory because you're going to have to have one of those for every instance. List again, you can see we have our octoprint2 right here. And there's pretty much only one other command that we need to run to create this new instance, so we'll have two running on this Raspberry Pi, and that's the update-rc.d command. That's going to update the defaults and auto-start octoprint2 when the Raspberry Pi boots. So we'll run that command, and now we should have two instances of octoprint on this Raspberry Pi. Let's reboot and make sure it comes up correctly. So we'll sudo reboot. So you should still have your regular instance at octopi.local, but you should now also have an instance at 5001. And for this one, you're probably going to have to use the IP. So I'll do 192.168.1.17 colon 5001. And here's our new instance of Octoprint with our setup wizard ready for us to configure it. Everything's going to be completely separate except for plugins. Those will be combined. So back to Putty. We'll log back in. So that's all fine and good. If you want to run those commands, you could just scrape them out of my document and run them. That wouldn't be a big deal. But we also need to set up our UDEV rules file so we know which printer is where when we plug it in. We have to identify each one with a couple of parameters. I'll show you more on that in a minute. But instead of doing this whole thing, I've created a script out on Dropbox that you can run if you'd like that does it all for you. It will automatically create four instances and then go in and set up your UDEV rule file with just blanked out values that you can punch in later. So we've cut out all these steps and have made it just one line command. So basically what this command is going to do, it's going to use sudo for its permission levels. It's going to do a web git out to Dropbox and create a file called multi underscore octo dot sh. That's a shell script. It's going to chmod that shell script so we can execute it and then it's going to execute it. All that's in that script are the commands that I'm showing you here. It just does them automatically. So if we run this command and we enter our sudo password, which is raspberry, it's going to connect up and create everything for us. We can take a look at what's actually in that script that downloaded. You can see all it's doing are the commands that we were manually doing before. And for instance, if we look at the etc slash init.d directory, you can see our octoprint, octoprint 2, 3, and 4. Now if we reboot one more time, sudo reboot. After the reboot's complete, we've got our original instance. Let's duplicate this tab. We'll go to 5001. For instance number 2, let's duplicate again. We'll change it to 5002. There's number 3. Duplicate one more time. Change it to 5003. And there's instance number four. So the original, 5001, 5002, 5003. All separate instances, and you can use a different printer on each one. Now comes a bit more of the tricky part. So back to Putty, let's log back in. Now we need to plug in our printers and assign them to a specific instance. And that's where this udev rules file comes in. If you ran that script, that created a generic one for you, but you still have to make some updates. So let's do sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash udev forward slash rules dot d forward slash 99 dash usb dot rules. And your sudo password. And here's the generic lines that I've created for you with that script. So now we need to collect some information about all the printers that we want to use with these multiple instances. And the easiest way to do that is just to plug the printers in one at a time and take a look at the log to gather that information. So for now, let's jump out of here. We'll do control X and we're going to tail the messages log. So we'll do tail dash capital F slash var slash log slash messages. Now doing a tail dash capital F that will continually monitor this log for any activity. You can just cat this log and take a look at it if you'd like, or you can do a tail dash number of lines you'd like to see. So if you want to see the last 50, do a dash 50. But now I'm going to plug in a 3D printer to show you what it looks like in the log when they get plugged in, so you know what to look for. So I just plugged in my Prusa Mark III. We have our ID vendor, we have our ID product, and on the Prusa printers, we also have a serial number. 
And serial number can be somewhat confusing. You need to use it as the attribute serial, all lowercase in that file for it to work, not serial number. If you don't have a serial number and you have two printers that are exactly the same, they have the same ID vendor and ID product, you can use what's called DevPath. DevPath will accept the device number of that USB port. In this case, it'd be 1.1. DevPath is tricky. Use it only as a last resort because if you move those printers around, the dev path can change. So let's control C this to stop tailing the log. The nice part about PuTTY is we can edit that file and still scroll back and see this log. So let's jump back to editing our 99-USB.Rules file, and we can enter in some of this information. These default values can be used as placeholders. They won't affect how the system works. So you can just leave these in here in case you need to add things later. But let's just update this top line for our Prusa printer. So we'll scroll back up. We have our ID vendor, 2C99. So in this file, in between the quotes, 2C99. Scroll back up. Our ID product, 0002. We'll update the file, 0002. Dev path, we don't need it for this Prusa printer because we have a serial, but we will update the serial. So you can scroll back, just highlight the serial number right here, and then you can come back to the file and just right click to paste it. And we also need a name for that printer. This is gonna be the name of the device alias that we're gonna use in Octoprint. So let's call it Prusa MK3. So we can control X to exit, Y and enter to save. And let's add another printer. So let's tail that messages log again. And let's add one that I know doesn't have a serial. How about our Ender 3? So I just plugged in our Ender 3. Here's all our information for that printer. We have an ID vendor, we have an ID product, but notice we have a serial number down here that's zero. That's not valid, you can't use that. So if you had multiple Ender 3s with this same ID product and vendor, you'd have to use your dev path. So let's go ahead and set this up in the USB file. We'll control C, we'll edit our 99USB.Rules file again, and we're gonna update it just the same as we did on the Prusa. So we'll scroll back. Our Ender 3 ID vendor is 1A86. We'll scroll back. Our Ender 3 ID product is 7523. And our dev path, which is listed right here, again, that's the USB device that's been plugged in, so you can't move that cable around, is 1.3. Now, we don't have two Ender 3s, or two printers that have the same ID vendor or an ID product, but I'm gonna go ahead and update dev path just to show you how to do it. So right here, to use dev path, you just enter 1.3. It's not the best solution, but it can work. And since we don't have a serial, I'm just gonna delete this serial attribute. Just like that. And now, let's give it an alias. We'll just call it Ender3. And then as you wanna add more printers, you'll just work down the printers. I suggest you just plug them in one at a time, grab your information, and then enter it like this. So we're just gonna do two for now. Let's go ahead and hit Control X, Y, and enter to save. And to bring those changes in, let's go ahead and reboot one more time. sudo reboot. So the Pi is back up, we've logged back in. Now let's make sure our devices are listed correctly. We're gonna do an ls slash dev. And now you can see that we have a Prusa MK3 device and an Ender 3 device. So that means it has read that file and assigned those names to those devices correctly. So now all we have to do is assign these devices to instances of Octoprint. So let's jump back to the web interface. Let's use our original Octoprint instance, the one on the main IP, port 5000, for the first one. So we'll go to settings, and in the serial connection, we're gonna add additional serial ports. And we just use that device name. So let's do our Prusa Mark III on this one. So we'll do slash dev, slash Prusa, MK3. Remember, Linux is always case sensitive, so whatever you make that name in that file, you need to match it here and everywhere else you use it. So we can save and then hit refresh on your browser. And now in your serial port, you should have your dev Prusa Mark III and you can go ahead and hit connect. Now you're connected up to your Prusa printer. You can go ahead and go into terminal to verify. Everything looks great. Now we'll add our Ender 3 to another instance on this Pi. So let's go to the second one at port 5001 right here. You will have to run through the wizards. I'll do that real quick. 
Something that I wanted to mention while I was running through the wizard are the server commands. You will have to update these for your additional instances of Octoprint, but you can just copy the same thing from the original instance, pretty much. But the Octoprint service name is actually going to be different. Remember when we set these up, we called them Octoprint, Octoprint 2, 3, and 4? You'll have to use that in the restart Octoprint command. So let's jump back to the initial instance, and we'll go to Settings. And if you go to Server under Octoprint, you can see the commands that it's going to use to perform these tasks. And unless you have these commands enabled, you won't have your power button up here on the taskbar. So let's just copy these over to the other instance. Restart Octoprint. We'll paste it in here. But on your second instance of Octoprint, if you just want to restart that one, it's going to be called Octoprint 2. Back to the initial instance. The Linux shutdown and restart commands are going to be the same. So we'll copy our shutdown-r command, put it in restart right here, and we'll copy our shutdown-h, h is for halt, we'll copy, and put it in our shutdown system. So we should be good to go. If we hit next, we're going to have some webcam options. We'll cover these in the next video. We'll hit next, and we're done. Now that the wizard is complete on this instance, we can do the same thing we did on the initial one. We just have to add that device. So we'll go to settings. It's right here in serial connection. We'll do forward slash dev, forward slash ender three. Remember, it's case sensitive. Hit save. Refresh your browser. Now in the port list, your Ender 3 port should be available right here, and we can hit connect. And we're connected up to our Ender 3. Go ahead and check the terminal. Everything's reporting successfully. So now we're on the Pi 4. We have two printers hooked up. We have four instances of Octoprint running. No webcams yet. But now I kind of wonder if the boot time has changed at all in between the 4 and the 3. No matter what changes we make, they're all on that SD card. So we can take that SD card out, put it in a Pi 3, and it should run exactly the same. So let's just do another quick test like we did before, just to see what the difference might be. So let's shut down this Pi 4, shut down system. We'll ping the network interface. We'll set our browser to refresh every one second. And we'll pull up our Google stopwatch. So this is the Pi 4 test. I'm going to power on the Pi and hit the stopwatch at the same time. So ready, go. So the network interface was ready in around 27 seconds, just like before. And the web interface was back at around 131. So let's stop our refresh here, and we'll check the second instance. It's back and up and running as well. So even though we have four instances running and we have a couple of printers, there's not much change here from when we only had one. So just for fun, let's swap over to the Pi 3 and take the same stats. Same deal, only now we're on the Pi 3. I have the printers plugged into the same USB ports as I did on the Pi 4. I'll power it up and hit the stopwatch at the same time. And go. We have switched over to the IP address of the Raspberry Pi 3. Pretty much the same thing, 25, 26 seconds on the interface being ready. And our web interface came back at around 122. We'll go ahead and stop this. Our first instance is ready, as well as our second one. The Octoprint instances seem to be available almost exactly the same time. So no real change here on Pi 3 or Pi 4. Again, this isn't very scientific. I just kind of want to see what happens, maybe make it a little more interesting. So it turns out the multiple instance Octoprint install we did a while back works exactly the same in Octoprint 0.17 as it did in previous versions. Only now you can either use that document and go one command at a time, or you can run that script that I provided for you to install everything automatically. That will get you four instances up and running fairly quickly. Now there is one more large section to this install, and we're going to save that for the next video, but hopefully you found this one helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll be back.